Many of you have been asking me about how I turn my illustrative logo sketches into digital vectors. Well, today's the day I spill the beans. I am gonna walk you through the process of vectorizing this sketch into a clean illustration, and tell me what you think about the final design in the comment section. Want me to work on your logo sketches? Send them to the email in the video description. And stay tuned, because this is just the start of our YouTube series covering Adobe Illustrator tools and illustration techniques. First, I select the sketch. Then I decrease its opacity to about 30%. Then I go to object, then lock, and I click on selection. Now that I have my sketch locked I start tracing it using different shapes and tools. To draw the heart shape I take the rectangle tool, and holding shift I make a square right here. I put it in the middle, then I hold shift and I rotate it by 45 degrees. I align it with the heart like this, then I make it a little bigger, then with the curvature tool. I drag this line to make it curved. Now, with the direct selection tool, I select this anchor point and I delete it. Now I hold Alt and Shift, then I drag this part of the heart to the left to duplicate it. Then I go to Object, Transform, the I click on Reflect, with the vertical option selected, I press OK. Then I drag it to the right and press Ctrl G to group them and form the heart. Now I go up here and I increase its stroke size to 10 points. Now, with the pen tool I trace the crown. Now I select the heart with the crown shape. And with the shape builder tool, I hold Alt, and I delete these parts. Now with the pen tool I hold shift and I make these lines. Now, to get the right sword pen size, I hold shift and I make a line from the top to the bottom of the sword. Then I drag it here, and I rotate it by 45 degrees. Then I do the same to get the size of the hand. With the rectangle tool. I make the quillen of the sword, and with the pen tool, I continue drawing the shape. Now, I select the two shapes, and with the align tool I align them to the center. With the ellipse tool, I make a circle here. I drag it up, and I select it along with the quillen, and then from the align tool, I align it to the bottom. I hold Alt and Shift, and I drag the circle to the left to duplicate it. Now I hold Shift and select the two circles together, then I press Ctrl G to group them, then I select everything, and I align it to the center. I delete this line, then I select the circles along with the rectangle, and from the Pathfinder, I click on Unite, to make the last form of the quillen. And from here, I give the fill the color white. With the direct selection tool, I select these two points, and I drag the widgets, to make this part rounded. I select the shape of the sword, then with the pen tool, I add an anchor point to the middle of the bottom of the sword, then with the direct selection tool, I hold shift and I select the two anchor points of the sides, and then I drag them up, to sharpen the sword. With the pen tool, I draw a line from here to here. Then I make these lines, and then I adjust it with the direct selection tool. With the ellipse tool, I make a circle here, then I resize it to fit the hand of the sword. Then I hold Alt to duplicate it and drag it here, and then I do the same and drag it here. Now with the pen tool, I make the lines of the hand grip. With the pen tool, I make a shape on the top of the tip of the pen. Then I hold shift and select it along with the sword, and with the shape builder, I hold alt, and I delete this exterior part. Now I select the sword pen, 
then I align it with the sketch, and then rotate it back to the left by 45 degrees. With the pen tool, I make this line that represents the piercing point. And from here, I swap the fill and color, and then with the eyedropper I give it the stroke size of the heart. While the line is still selected, I hold shift and I select the sword shape with the inside line and the heart shape, and with the shape builder, I hold alt and I delete the parts of the sword that are supposed to be in the back. I hold shift, and I select all the left parts of the sword. Then I press ctrl c to copy it, then ctrl f to paste it in place. Then I go to object, then transform, and then reflect, and press ok. Then I drag it to the right to align it with the sketch. I forgot this part, so I hold alt and I drag it here. Then I reflect it. And align it with the sketch. Now, I am tracing the wounds of the heart. I think that I made the quillen of the sword too much wider than the sketch, so I will modify it. So I hold shift, and I select all the elements of the quillen, then I drag it to the left, then I rotate it by 45 degrees. Now with the direct selection tool, I select the right part, and then with the left arrow, I shrink it down. Then I put it back in its place. Now. I delete the right quillen. Then, I select the left one, go to copy, and finally, I paste it in place. Then I go to, object, transform, then I click on reflect, and then I press ok. And now I drag it to the right. Now, with the brush tool, I start tracing the rows. Then I select the rows. Then I change the brush definition to basic and then with the eyedropper tool. I give it the main stroke size. With the direct selection tool, I adjust the placement of the anchor points and modify the curves to align it with the sketch. I select the rows. I rotate it a little. And then with the brush tool, I trace the stem. I change the brush definition to basic. Then with the eyedropper, I give it the main stroke size. While the brush tool is selected I hold alt to activate the smooth tool. Then I click and drag on it to make it smooth there. As a simple line for the stem, the brush tool gave me too many anchor points. So I am going to recreate it with the pen tool. Now using the handles, I adjust it to meet the sketch. Now I will make the thorns, so with the pen tool. I click here. Then I click here and drag to make a curve. I click on this point to break the path. Then here and drag. And finally I close the path, and from here, I swap the fill and stroke. Then with the direct selection tool, I adjust it. Then hold alt and duplicate it. Then I go to object, transform, and reflect it. Then I rotate it to take its place. And then I adjust it using the direct selection tool. Now to illustrate the leaves. I select the ellipse tool and I make a circle. Then I hold alt and drag it up to duplicate it and make it overlapped with the other one. I hold shift and I select the two circles. Then from the pathfinder, I click on intersect. I shrink it a bit down, then I stretch it to the right a little. And then I put it in its place. 
I select the rows, hold Alt and drag it down here, then I rotate it upside down, and align it with the sketch. With the pen tool, I make the stem, and I move the handles to adjust the curves. Now, I duplicate the leaf and drag it down and rotate it to fit the sketch. Then I continue to make all the leaves. To make the sparkling stars, I make a vertical rectangle. I swap the fill and stroke. I make it a little taller and a bit thinner. Then I hold Alt and Shift and rotate it. I select the two rectangles, and from the Pathfinder, I click on Unite. With the Direct Selection tool, I select the outside anchor points. Then I drag the widgets to make the tip of the rectangles rounded. Then I select the inner anchor points, and then I drag the widgets to make the inner corners rounded. To make the smaller star, I hold Alt and drag this one here, then I shrink it down and overlap it with the sketch. And for the small stars, I will replace them with small circles. Now, I do the same to make the other sparkling stars group. Now I hold Alt and drag the thorn down to duplicate it, then I put it in its place, and then I do this for all the other thorns. I select all the elements of the roses along with the sparkling stars, and I group them, then I hold Alt and drag them to the right. Then I reflect it, and fit them to the sketch. To make the blood droplets, I make a circle. With the eyedropper, I give it the main stroke of the design. And then I hold Alt Shift and drag it to the right. Then I select the two circles, and from the Pathfinder, I click on Intersect. Then with the Direct Selection tool, I select the bottom anchor point, then I drag the widget up, to make it rounded and get the droplet shape. Now I hold Shift and rotate it by 90 degrees, then I fit it to the sketch. And then I do the same for the rest of the droplets. I think the rose looks a little bit odd so I will try to make it more symmetric. Right click and I ungroup those elements. I select the rows and I drag it aside. Then I rotate it to make it straight. With the direct selection tool, I select those points. Then I stretch it a bit up. And then I modify a little bit the upper part. Now with the brush tool selected, I hold Alt to activate the smooth tool, and I drag on a stroke to make it smooth there. Now I think it looks so much better. Now I delete the old rose and I replace it with the new one, then I rotate it and move it to fit the stem. Then I duplicate it to replace the other one. Now I select all the elements of the roses and the stars. Then I group them back. I delete the elements if the right side. Then I hold Alt and drag the left elements to the right. And then I reflect them and fit them to the sketch. Before we move to the coloring phase, I forgot to join these two points of the heart. So I select them and I press Ctrl J to join. And that's it. This is the color palette that I have picked to use it for this illustration. First, I select the heart shape, then with the eyedropper, I hold shift and give the fill the red color. And for the crown, I use the yellow color, then I do the same for the grip of the sword. And for these circles, I give them this pale yellow color. 
and for the right grip, I give it the yellow color. Then I apply the pale yellow to all the circles. I think the line that represents the fuller of the sword is left behind. I select this part, Ctrl X to cut it, I select the line, then Ctrl B to paste it in back. Now I want to separate this part of the sword to give it a different color. I select the hand if the sword along with the quillen and the piercing point. Then with the shape builder I click on this part. Then I select it. Ctrl X to cut it. And then I press Ctrl Z to undo what I did. Then Ctrl F to paste the created shape in front. Then I give it the pale yellow color. Ctrl X to cut it. I select the hand of the sword, then I press Ctrl F to paste it in front. With the ear dropper, I click on the crown to give it the same stroke size, then I give back to the fill the pale yellow color. Now I do the same for the hand of the right sword. For the pencils, I give them the pale yellow color. And for the blood droplets, I give them the red color. You can see here the pen is set on top of the stroke of the heart shape, so I have to move it back. I select the pen on the right, then right click, the range, and then send it to back. Then I do the same for the other pen. Now it looks so much better. I hold shift and I select all the leaves. And then I give them the color green. I've used all the colors, so I will get rid of the palette. As I illustrated the rows with separated lines, I will use the brush tool and trace the outline. Then I select these two points. Control J to join them. Then I give it the red color. I remove the black outline. Then I send it to the back of the rose stroke. It is now in the back of the sketch, so right click, then arrange, and send forward. Now I delete the elements on the right side. Then I delete this rose. Then I hold alt and drag this one and put it right here. I rotate it then I align it with the sketch. Now I select all the elements. Then I hold shift and alt and drag them to the right. Then I go to object, transform, then I click on reflect and press ok. Now it's time to add some highlights and shadows, but before that, I want to change the hand of the sword and make it smaller. First I select it, then I hold alt and drag it to the left, then I rotate it by 45 degrees. With the pen tool, I retrace the hand of the sword, and I drag it to the right. I align it with the old hand, then I select the two upper anchor points and I make it shorter. Then I select the right anchor point, and with the right arrow, I move it 10 points to the right. Then I do the same for the left anchor points. Now I select the two anchor points, then I drag the widget to make it rounded. Now I delete the old hand, and I put this one in its place, then Ctrl X to cut it. Then I select the quillen, and I press Ctrl B to paste it in back. Now I make these lines wider to fit the sword grip, then I delete those. And I drag this circle down here. Then I delete the old hand and I replace it with the new one. Ctrl X to cut it. Then I select this part, then Ctrl B to paste it in back. Or I will delete this part and let only the fuller align. Then with the arrows, I align it to the middle. Then I do the same for the hand of the right sword. Now I want to separate the wood part of the pencil, so I select everything, and with the shape builder, I click on it.
I cut it, then I paste it in back, and leave it with the pale yellow color, and I give the rest of the body of the pencil the yellow color. Then I do the same for the other pencil. Now to make the shadow, I cover this part with the pen tool. Then I select the created shape along with the heart shape, then with the shape builder, I hold alt and click here to delete the exterior part. Then I select it, and I swap the fill and stroke, and then I delete the stroke. Then with the pen tool, I cover this part, then I select it along with the heart shape, then with the shape builder again. I hold Alt and I click here to delete the exterior part. Then I select it, Ctrl X to cut it. Then I select the crown, and then I press Ctrl B to paste it in back. With the direct selection tool, I adjust it to make it thinner. To make the shadow of the heart on the pencil, I select the pen too, and I make a rectangle like this. Then I hold Alt and drag it here. Then right click and send it to front. Then I go to Object, Transform. Then I click on Reflect and press OK. Now as you can see in the sketch, we will make those line shadows. With the Pen tool, I click here. Then I hold Shift and click here, and then with the eyedropper, I give it the main stroke size. I stretch it a little bit. Then I hold Alt and drag it here. Then I make these two lines. Now, I will make the shadow of the right sword hand. With the pen tool, I cover this part. Then I select the created shape along with the hand of the sword, then with shape builder. I click here. Then I copy it. Then I delete all this. Then Ctrl F and paste it in front. Then I swap the fill and stroke. And then I delete the stroke. With the pen tool. I click here. Then I hold shift and click here. Then I click here and drag. And then I close the shape. Now I select the created shape along with the sword hand, and then with the shape builder, I hold Alt and click on the exterior part to delete it. Ctrl X to cut it, then I select the hand, and then Ctrl F to paste it in front. Now to make this corner rounded, with the direct selection tool, I click on this anchor point, and then I drag the widget. With the direct selection tool, I will stretch this short line a little. Then I move this anchor point here. And then I drag this one down here. Then I align this one with it. With the pen tool, I cover all this part. Then Ctrl X to cut it. Then I select this shadow and then Ctrl B to paste it in back. While this shape is selected, I hold Shift and select the other shadow, then from the Pathfinder, I click on Unite. With the Direct Selection tool, I click on this corner. Then I drag the widget to make it rounded. Then I adjust this part to make it perfect. To add more depth to the illustration, I will make some overlaid shadow and highlight for the crown. With the pen tool, I click here. Then I hold shift and click here. Then I click here and drag to make a little curve. Then I close the shape. While the newly created shape is selected, I hold shift, then I select the crown, and then with the shape builder, I hold alt and delete the exterior part. Then with the eyedropper, 
I give it the color of the crown, and then I delete the stroke. Then I go to transparency, and I change the color mode to multiply. Now I adjust it a little bit using the direct selection tool. For the highlight, I will do the same. But I will give it the white color. And from the transparency panel, I change the color mode to overlay. For the upper heart highlights, I will make them thinner by using strokes. With the pen tool, I click here. Then I click here and drag to make an arc. I adjust it a little. Then with the eyedropper, I give it the overlaid white color, I swap the fill and stroke. And then I increase the size to 10 points. I double click on the eraser tool, I decrease the size. Then drag to delete this part. Now. I do the same here. Then with the bent tool, I cover this part, then I select the created shape along with the sword hand, then with the shape builder, I hold out and click to delete the exterior part. Now Ctrl X to cut it, then I select the hand, and Ctrl F to paste it in front, then with the eyedropper, I give it the highlight color. I decided to make those circles smaller. Now with the pen tool, I click here, then I hold shift and click here. Then I give it the highlight color. Then I stretch it like this. And then with the eraser, I delete this part. Then I do the same for the other hand, but I give it the shadow color. Now I make those highlights lines. Now I will add some highlights and shadows for the roses and leaves. I start by ungrouping the rose and leaves elements. Then with the pen tool, I cover the right part of this rose petal. Then I give it the red color, then I select it along with the stroke. Then with the shape builder, I hold out and delete this part. Ctrl X to cut it, then I select the background shape if the rose, then Ctrl F to paste it in front, and then from the transparency panel, I change the color mode to multiply. I want to make it darker, so double click on the color fill panel, then I drag the cursor to a darker red hue. With the direct selection tool, I adjust the curves to make them smooth there. Then I continue to do this for the rest petals and leaves of the rose. Now, I delete the left rose and sparkling stars elements. Then I hold out and drag the right side elements. Then I reflect them, and drag them in the right place. Double click. Then I select all the shadow parts. And then with the eyedropper, I give them the highlight color. As the left side is the highlighted side, I will remove this shadow on the pencil. And with the pen tool, I cover this part. Then I hold shift and select the pencil. Then with the shape builder, I hold out and delete the useless part. Then I give it the highlight color. As I rotated every slanted line by 45 degrees in my illustration, to correct inclined symmetrical elements, I just rotate them back to a straight position before working in them. I do that. Then I select these two blood droplets, then from the align panel, I align them vertically to the bottom. Then with the arrows, 
I adjust the position to make them symmetrical to the pencil. And then I do the same for the other droplets. Now to make the droplets shadow, I hold out and drag this drop up here, then I select the two drops. And with the shape builder, I hold out and I delete this part, then I press Ctrl C to copy it, then Ctrl Z until I get back to this phase, and then I press Ctrl F to paste it in front, then with the eyedropper I give it the shadow color. Then from the transparency panel, I change the color mode to multiply. Then I do the same for the other drop. And for the left side droplets, I do the same, but I give it the highlight color. So, that's it for today's video folks, I hope you found this logo vectorization process easy to follow, stay tuned for more Adobe Illustrator tips and tricks on this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss an update, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video, happy designing.